focus on this story. Transport Minister Figile Mbalula challenging the High Court's decision on Arto comes as no surprise. Well, that's the view of the organization Undoing Tax Abuse, or OUTA. It says the minister should rather consult with civil society for meaningful ways to improve law enforcement. The High Court in Pretoria has ruled that the Arto Act and its amendments are unconstitutional. And Minister Mbalula says they're going to be appealing against this. Let's hear some more now from Wayne Duvinage of Outer. Mr. Duvinage, good afternoon. Thank you very much uh, for your time. You say you were not surprised by the minister's stance. Why? Well, I think it's a, a typical knee-jerk reaction or habit uh, that government gets itself into trying to defend uh, every matter that um, is brought against it. Look, it's their right to do so. This is not your ordinary uh, appeal process. Uh, we'll be filing our confirmation application on that ruling to the Constitutional Court, and then the minister will have to not appeal that, but challenge that decision in the uh, Constitutional Court. So, yeah, let's see what happens. I think uh, what we are saying, the what would be more meaningful for the minister to do is to start engaging with civil society and other major stakeholders in the problems that we have foreseen and spoken about for some time on this R2 matter. Okay, let's just take a step back and remind some of our viewers, what is the problem in your view with R2? Well, R2 is a national uh, competence that's been driven by the Road Traffic uh, Infringement Agency, RTAA, which is a department within the Department of Transport, and uh, it usurps the executive powers of local government. Uh, and local government is where traffic funds, traffic fund management uh, sits. It doesn't sit at national. And the impact that the national departments are having over the... Uh, uh, over local government uh, in this uh, regard is detrimental to themselves, uh, to local government. So, so it needs to be constitutional. If it's not, it will be challenged and it will fail. We've already seen last year that the city of Cape Town and many uh, other municipalities are, are raising their concerns and will want to extricate themselves from R2 because it has a negative impact on them. And we're not opposed to the demerit point system that comes with R2, but that's one element of it. But if people can't participate meaningfully and effectively and fairly in the whole demerit point system, it is going to collapse and it's going to collapse uh, uh, in, in a big way. Is that why you think one of the ways, the best ways forward, rather than be uh, dealing with this matter in courts, is a wider, more meaningful consultation with various stakeholders? Absolutely. And, you know, we did follow the whole public engagement process that the RTA underwent on this. Uh, the road shows they had, it was flawed, it was meaning, uh, it was seriously flawed. We tried to raise our objections. To the extent that we had our own stakeholder workshop where the Road Freight uh, Association was invited, the AA, a number of um, big road users, fleet uh, owners, as well as the the, um, the police, the Metro Police from Chuane City and Joburg Metro, uh, who also came and also expressed their concerns, by the way, about this. We invited the RTIA to that meeting. They initially indicated they would join us, and then they didn't. And we've given them the results of that. So there are some fundamental flaws in the way R2 is set up. And we don't want to go down the same road as government went with ETOLs. It will fail because they're not listening to the public. And that's embarrassing. Government suffers a crisis of legitimacy when its own systems fail and they can't enforce. So we're asking this time for government to walk hand in hand with civil society so we can fix this problem rather than create a bigger mess. So you're not against uh, you, the use of a legislative framework that will change behavior on the roads? No, not, not at all. So long as it's enforceable and that it works and that it doesn't prejudice or put the public into a difficult situation. When the public find it very difficult to raise their objections to traffic fines, I don't have to tell you how many clone number plates there are. If you get your notifications too late, if you have to pay money to object, if you have to introduce uh, or try to get to tribunals, uh, and, and, and manage your traffic fine processes in this way. This becomes extremely uh, cumbersome administratively. It doesn't work properly, and that's when these systems collapse. And government has this problem very often. It just believes that if it legislates and, and puts in regulations that everything falls into place. It just doesn't work like that in the real world. They need to be practical, and they often okay. say, well, it works overseas. 
Well, I can tell you it's very different overseas to, to the administrative processes here. Thank you very much for clarifying Alta's position there. That's Wayne Duvenage in relation to that administrative framework. That government now says it's planning to appeal or challenge the earlier ruling by the High Court in, um, in, in Pretoria that uh, ruled that Alta is um, unconstitutional.